Do you give people any um, techniques or guidance on how to open their hearts to, to find the love they have within or the, the love they are and, and express it? Yes, I do. One of the easiest ways is to um, make use of the ancient mantras. You know, so you can do sound mantras or for the more intellectually minded uh, and mentally focused, uh, uh, I like to say to them, write something that makes sense to you. For instance, you could say something very simple. I am open to receiving the gift of healing. Very simple. But as simple as it is, you need to say it and say it and say it and say it until it's programmable again into your system because very often people walk around feeling that they have a disease because they have been punished or because they don't deserve to be loved or they don't deserve to be happy. You know, all this kind of horror is going up in their minds and they've got these incredible voices that are really actuating to me as the absolute absence of love. You know, we are already loved. We just need to reconnect to this love that we are. And when you feel that you are loved, then of course all the abundance of the universe is yours and all the health of the universe is yours and all the gifts of the universe are yours. It's not as if, you know, you're going to have to beg them like a beggar, you see. So I say to them, shift from this space where you are to this space where you need to be. So I give them uh, appropriate mantras and, and uh, one of them uh, is very easy because I always try to bring things, especially when I write, to the greatest simplification that I can get. And one of them is, with every thought of fear, say, I am divinely protected. Any fear of lack, say, I am divinely provided for. Any absence of love, I am divinely loved. You see, so this is the easy, easy mantra. So I, I make them write those things because after three or four hours with me, I don't want them to forget. I don't want them to forget. And um, so the most important, for instance, I say to them, you know, okay, so fine, you are now diagnosed with cancer. You've got two options to live from this moment. You can live with ease and grace into this new state, or you can live with horror and fear and, and, and you know, in, in this state. So remember what I said about okay? So if you say, I am open to live this state of my life with ease and grace, guess what? The universe is going to say, the entire universe is love, you know, it's benevolent. And it has given us this powerful choice to choose all the time to be in this space or in that space. So I always say to them, you do not have to be in this space of non-love. You don't have to hear anybody that wants to speak to you uh, with words of non-love. You, you don't have to be in the space of fear. You don't have to be in the space of whatever it is that doesn't comfort you, you know? We have choices. I like to have a beautiful, comfortable life. I like to handle my patients with love, with ease and grace. I say to them, why can't you do the same? And I tell them, I manifested this reality. Why? I choose it on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. I am choosing it as I'm speaking to you, Philip, to do this with even grace, to share as much as possible with you as I would do with my patients here in this very room that we are recording, you know? And it is so much our power of choice, and so I always write for them, power, you have power. <laughs> power to heal, power to choose, power to do, power to undo, you know? And, and the only delicate moment during my session is to make them see, and that's where all the love in my heart is to come into the equation. And I say to all the angels of love and, and all, all the cosmic beings that are listening, please channel this love through me so that they can feel that I'm not pointing the fingers that you created your cancer, but I want them to understand, just as you create something beautiful, 
we also create what is not sometimes so beautiful or so pleasant. So take ownership of that creation, embrace your creation, dissolve your creation and start a new. That's how healing happens. So we could all be self-healers. Totally. 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 I don't know if you are familiar with the material um, very much in vogue in, 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 in the spiritual circles, like the books of Crayon. You know, Crayon is speaking about us speaking to our DNA for, for, for years, you know. I do that for, I don't know, for 30 years. I speak to my body. If, if, I, if I am coughing, I speak to my lungs and say, please work a little bit better. You know, I need you to cooperate here. This is a polluted earth. I need you to be optimally functioning for me. You know, if my feet are sore, I will cuddle my feet. I will give it some love and I will say, thank you for carrying me through this earth. You know, and I give it some love. And that's all it takes, really. I, I receive so much guidance from the angels, sometimes for particular patients, and then I give it to them, and I give it to every other one, because what sometimes comes for one applies to all of us, because ultimately we know that the reality, the greater reality and the greater truth is that we are one. You know, if I, if I make you happy, I'm happy. If I make you sad, I will sooner or later also experience your sadness, because the entire universe is working all the time in the circles, and this spirals so everything comes back to its source so i always say to them remember this but give love to yourself first because cancer trauma all kinds of severe diseases have a very common trait in the personality of those who become afflicted and that is a definite absence of self-love and then I encourage them to develop great love for themselves because unconditional love for self means loving yourself when you are good and up and adoring yourself when you are down because how else can you pick yourself up, you know? So love yourself. I always joke, you know, I make it very personal. For instance, I say, look, when I was very young, I was very beautiful. Now I've got muffin tops here, you know, my, my, my breast size went from a, 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 a size to a double D or maybe even bigger now because the bra is going so tight, you know. And all this decompresses them. And I say, and I love myself more now than when I was so beautiful. Because I have learned that the costume that life has given me for experiencing life on earth has been so kind to me. So often we abuse it, you know, by not taking good care of it, by not giving it good nutrition, by not exercising, by not doing what we should be doing. And yet our body carries us. Our heart keeps beating, whether we love or hate with it. How amazing is that? That in itself is proof that we are love. It just keeps beating that poor heart, you know? And speaking of which, I had a couple of, uh, over the years, probably a couple of hundred uh, heart patients, you know? And I teach them just to love their heart. Put your hands on your heart, acknowledge your heart, listen to your heart. It's beating permanently in resonance with all of life, with the resonance with the earth. Our heart is beating in resonance with the earth's vibration. How beautiful is that? You know? So I give them quite a bit of written text because I don't want them to go home and just rely on me giving them healing while they are lying down. No, I want them to be the co-healers of their own. Because everyone has got the healer within, you know? And all I can do is to trigger that for them. It's to, like, reconnect the wires. I always say to them, I reconnect the wires. <laughs> like, I am in between dimensions, uh, an instrument between dimensions, you know? So I say to them, you wouldn't put your cell phone directly on a, you know, we need a little transformer, a little adapter. So I am your adapter, but you have this receiving capacity. Your receptor is your heart, so just open, open it there. Open to the love. The love is everywhere. There is nowhere that it is not. It is us that live in that illusion, you know that this is not love and this is love. No, love is a good one. 
and their full healing, as I define it as just a fancy word for love, it's everywhere as well. In fact, Philip, uh, when I started recently sharing my uh, healing knowledge with, with groups, uh, one of the angels in my uh, telepathic meditations came and said, you know that everything heals in the universe. Not just people, not healers. We're not unique. The water heals. The plant kingdom heals. The mineral kingdom heals. The wind heals. There is nothing that does not heal in the entire universe. Have you ever thought about it? You don't. No. I haven't. No. no. For me it was a revelation. Everything, But of course everything heals. We've got the most majestic pharmacopoeia today. And it's made out of crystal elements, earth elements, plant animals, even from the labs, from chemical elements, you know what I'm saying? Everything heals. Even poison, given in its uh, homeopathic uh, dosage, will heal some poisoned person. Everything heals. Because everything is love. Everything around us whether we perceive it or not. Because the greater part of the reality we cannot perceive with our apparatus of perception, with our five senses. But it doesn't mean that we don't perceive that it's not there. But everything is love. Just in different expressions. 